Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. The total magnification of a microscope is calculated by multiplying the magnifying power of the eyepiece and objective lenses. D gives the greatest value. The actual diameter is calculated by the image diameter divided by the magnification. You must measure the image size using a ruler, convert the measurement to micrometer or nanometer, and then do the division. On the printed paper, the particle measures around 4 millimeters. So, its actual size is about 160 micrometers, which is about 1.5 times 10 in the power of 2 nanometers. One is correct as the ribosome is the site of translation, and the Golgi body is where proteins are modified. Two is wrong because lysosome is not used for exocytosis, so the glycoproteins should not be packaged into lysosomes. Three is a correct description of how exocytosis occurs. Microtubules are found in cilia and flagellum. The sliding of outer microtubules inside these structures leads to the movement. Microtubules are assembled to form spindle fibers, so it is true that they attach to centromeres during metaphase to align the chromosomes on the equator. They form the cytoskeleton inside a cell and help transport organelles and vesicles through the cytoplasm. Chloroplasts and mitochondria have circular DNA. The Golgi body does not contain any genetic material. Plant cells have cellular cell walls and prokaryotes have peptidoglycan cell walls. All cells have a cell surface membrane. Plant cells have 80S ribosome and 70S ribosomes in their chloroplasts and mitochondria. Prokaryotes have 70S ribosomes. So, all three are correct. All viruses have either DNA or RNA. So, they must contain phosphodiester bonds. Capsid or protein coat is a common feature of all viruses. Peptide bond joins the amino acids together. Both phosphodiester and peptide bonds are covalent bonds, so 3 is correct as well. Even though the error described here sounds like a random error, the students make the same error consistently. This makes the error a systematic error, so 3 is correct. We can't reduce the effect of systematic errors by making more replicates as the error will still occur in the same way no matter how many times we repeat the experiment. Since the error is consistent, the student would not have a problem finding the solution with the highest concentration as all the measurements are skewed towards the same direction to the same degree. Amylopectin and glycogen have 1,4 glycosidic bonds that join the alpha glucose together. They have 1,6 bonds at where they branch. Both polysaccharides are made up entirely of alpha glucose, so 2 is incorrect. Glycogen is more compact and more highly branched compared to amylopectin. It has more 1,6 bonds because of the greater number of branches. Fatty acids can be saturated or unsaturated, depending on whether they have a carbon carbon double bond in the hydrocarbon chain. Saturated fatty acids only contain one double bond between C and O near the carboxy group. The more CH bonds there are, the more the fatty acid can be oxidized in respiration to release energy. So, it is true that long hydrocarbon chains can store more energy due to a greater number of CH bonds. Fatty acids are hydrophobic and insoluble. An insoluble molecule cannot alter the water potential as it does not interact with water. If you draw out the structural formula of all the options, you will realize that D is the only one with no free space to form a bond with the carbon in the amino acid. All the carbons in the molecule have already formed the maximum number of bonds. Enzyme lowers the activation energy of a reaction. So, X is an uncatalyzed reaction with a higher activation energy, while Y is a reaction catalyzed by an enzyme. Z shows the difference between the energy content of the substrate and the product. In this case, the substrate has more energy than the product, indicating that energy was released in the reaction. If you compare point X of the two graphs, 
you can notice that the rate increases if the enzyme concentration is higher. This means that the enzyme concentration is the factor that controls the rate of reaction at the moment. Km is the subject concentration at which the reaction rate is 50% of the Vmax. Since it causes half of Vmax, it is the point where half the active sites of the enzymes are occupied by the substrate. 2 is also correct according to the definition. 3 is wrong. A low Km value indicates a low substrate concentration is needed to reach half of Vmax. This means the enzyme can bind well with the substrate as it has a higher affinity. A high Km value means that a high substrate concentration is required to reach the Vmax. This shows a low affinity. So, it is true that the reaction will proceed very slowly to its maximum rate. At high temperatures, phospholipid molecules have more kinetic energy. They move more and will be further apart as there are fewer intermolecular interactions. This increases the membrane's fluidity. Cholesterol in the cell surface membrane interacts with the fatty acid chains of phospholipids, reducing the mobility of the fatty acid chains and make the membrane more rigid. Cell P looks normal, Q is turgid, and R is plasmolized. The water potential of cell P's cytoplasm is the same as the sugar solution, but it does not mean that the sugar concentration is the same. It may be due to other types of solutes, so A is wrong. Flaccid refers to the state of a plant cell that has lost water and is no longer turgid, so B is incorrect. The 1% solution has the lowest concentration and highest water potential. Water enters the cell by osmosis down the water potential gradient. It is correct. D is wrong because the solution outside should have a more negative water potential for water to move out from the cell by osmosis. As the side length increases, volume increases more rapidly than surface area. This is because volume is cube of the length, while surface area is 6 times the square of the length. As the size of a cube increases, its surface area to volume ratio decreases since surface area increases slower than volume. There are 96 hours in 4 days. If the cell division takes 32 hours, the cell would divide 3 times in the period. So, 12 cells will become 96 after 3 divisions. All 4 of the diagrams show the roles of mitosis. One is the asexual reproduction of a plant by runners. Two shows the development of fruit. Mitosis takes place after pollination. Three is the growth of a plant by increasing cell number. Four is the regeneration of body structure. Mitosis is used to produce genetically identical cells. The word cell cycle includes the interface, nuclear division such as mitosis, and cytokinesis. So, all the events here are the answers. A is wrong because the strands are antiparallel. It means the two strands of the double helix run in opposite directions. B is wrong because A and T form two hydrogen bonds, not three. C is correct as ligase is needed to join the Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand together by forming phosphodiester bonds. D is wrong because it is the sugar phosphate backbone not phosphate and the whole nucleotide. The leading strand occurs at the template that runs from 3' prime to 5' prime, as DNA is synthesized from 5 to 3' prime direction. It is synthesized continuously from the outside to the inner part where the replication fork is. A and B are wrong because the leading strands are synthesized from the inner part. D is wrong because it shows the synthesis of new strands from the 3 to 5' prime direction. The base pairs with two hydrogen bonds are A and T, and those with three are C and G. A and G are purines with two rings, while C and T are pyrimidines with one ring. So, the three nucleotides in the box are A, C, and C. It will be transcribed into U, G, and G in the mRNA. It codes for tryptophan. Water moves in the cell wall and intercellular spaces in the apoplast pathway. 
while the Simplus pathway refers to the movement of water in the cytoplasm. A and B label the names incorrectly. C has the correct labels, but water cannot pass through the cell wall of the endodermal cell due to the presence of the Casparin strip, which is made out of suberin. It is impermeable to water. One is the epidermal hair called trichome. Two refers to the space inside the roll leaf. Somata are found on this surface. Three shows the thick wax cuticle on the epidermis. One and two can trap the water vapor that diffuses out of the stomata. The moist air will reduce the water vapor concentration gradient and hence the evaporation of water. The waxy cuticle creates a barrier that prevents water from evaporating too. Protons are actively transported from the cytoplasm of companion cells to their cell walls. Assimilates will then be co transported into the cell using a co transported protein. This is facilitated diffusion. Then, assimilates diffuse into the sieve tube elements via plasmodesmata. Companion cell has a higher concentration of sucrose compared to the mesophyll cell. This is why the active transport of protons is needed to move sucrose by secondary active transport. It also has a higher concentration compared to the sieve tube elements. That is why sucrose can diffuse passively through the plasmodesmata. A is wrong because active transport is needed for the loading of assimilates. B is correct. Mass flow is the movement of fluid down a pressure gradient, which occurs in both tissues. C is only true for phloem. D is only true for xylem, as phloem can transport assimilates in different directions. One is the vessel coming out of the right ventricle. It is the pulmonary artery. In both the pulmonary artery and aorta, they are semilunar valves. Three is the tricuspid valve. Together with the bicuspid valve, they are known as the atrial ventricular valves as it is located between atria and ventricles. Four is the blood vessel transporting blood into the right atrium. It is the vena cava. The inner layer of veins is the tunica intima. Capillaries are only one cell thick. The endothelium is the innermost layer of veins and the only layer forming the capillaries. Excess tissue fluid is a result of excessive water moving out of capillaries and accumulating near the body tissues. B can cause this to happen as higher blood pressure can force more fluid to escape the capillaries. If there are more proteins in the blood plasma, the water potential of the plasma will be reduced. This causes less water to move out by osmosis. If the tissue fluid has a lower concentration of small proteins, its water potential increases. This will increase the movement of water back into the capillaries by osmosis. D is wrong as it is the opposite of the correct statement. There is a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide near the respiring tissue. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the red blood cells. Some of them will bind to the amino group of hemoglobin, forming carbamino hemoglobin. A and B are wrong because as more carbon dioxide enters the red blood cell, there will be more action of carbonic anhydrous. More bicarbonate ions will form and diffuse out of the cell, leading to a greater rate of chloride shift. More protons will bind to hemoglobin too, forming hemoglobinic acid. C is incorrect because red blood cells have lost their nuclei. They cannot produce more enzymes. They only contain the carbonic anhydrase that was produced before the removal of their nuclei. Even though the graph shows pressure changes in the left side of the heart, similar changes should be observed in the right heart. Atrial systole starts at T and causes an increase in the atrial pressure. It stops at V when ventricular systole starts and the AV valve closes. The contraction of the ventricular wall causes the ventricular pressure to increase, and this process ends when the semilunar valve closes. Bronchioles generally do not have goblet cells, so one is wrong. All airways contain epithelial cells on the surface facing the lumen. Muscle tissue can be found in all bronchioles too, 
it is important to change their diameters. This is a 3D electron micrograph, so it is not taken by a TEM. The biconcave cells in the central are the red blood cells. Those large spaces are the alveolar spaces. The cells lining the spaces are the squamous epithelial cells. Infectious diseases are always caused by pathogens and can be transmitted from one host to another. So, D is the correct answer as it gives examples of different pathogens that can cause diseases. The clear zone indicates bacteria being killed. The well that contain a concentrated solution made from the cytoplasm of X shows that bacterial growth is inhibited. So, it can be concluded that molecule Y, which is produced by cell X, can function as an antibiotic. The intact cells of X do not cause bacterial death. It shows that molecule Y cannot be released from cell X when they are not broken. The experiment was not done on human cells, so the last statement was not tested. If we test the pathogen and use a specific antibiotics that can kill it effectively, there will be a lower chance of some cells surviving and developing antibiotic resistance. A is wrong because non-cellular pathogens such as viruses and prions cannot be killed by antibiotics. B is wrong because repeatedly exposing a pathogen to an antibiotic that is not effective would increase its resistance to it. D is incorrect as a wide-spectrum antibiotic can affect the non-targeted bacteria that are normally found in the human body. The overexposure of this bacteria to a wide-spectrum antibiotic can increase their chance of developing antibiotic resistance. Helper T lymphocytes must secrete cytokines first as this is a cell signaling molecule that activates many other cells. Cytokines will activate killer T cells to undergo clonal expansion. They will bind to the target cell with specific antigens. Then, killer T cells release cytotoxin such as H2O2 that kills the targeted cells. 2 is irrelevant as the question is about the destruction of transplanted tissue with non-self antigens. This is the role of killer T cells. U and X are the antigen binding sites on the variable region. They bind to the same specific antigen. V is the hinge region. It gives flexibility to the antibody so it can use its antigen binding sites to bind with the antigens at different distances. C is wrong as W is the constant region. Its function is to bind to the receptor on phagocytes, existing the phagocytosis of antigens. X is an antigen binding site, so it will not bind to phagocyte receptors. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.